everybody, we're back. Oh, the show's moving along just fine. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest plays the character Spud in uh, the movie Train Spotting. It's the second highest grossing British film of all time. Uh, I saw the movie last night. It's fascinating. Please welcome U.N. Bremner. I, uh, thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate it. I, I, we, there's been so much advanced talk about this movie. Mm -hmm. It's done so well in uh, Europe. I went and saw it last night, and I've never seen a movie quite like it. It's really very fascinating. Uh -huh. And the directing is great. And, and one thing I marked upon, just to tell people, it's about a group of young men in Scotland who are junkies. And yeah. you guys were fantastic. It was just such realistic portrayals of junkies. I was wondering just how you did that. Seriously. Hey, well, I mean, these, these guys are junkies, but they're the kind of junkies that you like, you know. You, they're lovable the day, junkies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so, that they, they are. They're, they're, they actually, they are, I mean, it sounds like a joke, but they are very likable. You sympathize with them. But I thought that just the, the appearance of you guys and everything, I, I was just wondering how you, how you captured Well, that everybody's feel. asking if we took heroin to yeah. get into the roles and stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, no. I mean, for my part, Right. I don't need to do that kind of thing. I mean, I've got, I got a natural junkie complexion as it is. <laughs> it comes from being a, a vegetarian. Uh, really? I grew up on peanut butter sandwiches and all that sort of stuff. Without no, no nutritional value whatsoever. Uh-huh. So you've got that nice junkie complexion that everyone's going for. Yeah. All right, well... Say no more. Uh, and and w let's show people a little bit. Uh, let's show a clip. And, and uh, so that people get a flavor for the movie. Set it up for us. Tell us what we need to know for this, for okay. this clip. Okay, in this, in, this, in this part of the film you're going to see, um, I've got to go for a job interview, but I'm not really wanting this job. Mm -hmm. So my good friend suggests that I, I take some uh, speed mm -hmm. to help me along. Speed, to get you just to, so that yeah, in a way know. that you'll blow the interview. Exactly. You won't be able to do it. Amphetamines. Okay, yeah. let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, this clip from Train Spotting. We're all in this together, and I wanted to put across the general idea rather than the details. Like, people get all hung up on details. Like, which school did I go to? How many grades did I get? Could be like six, could be none. It's not important. What is important is that I am. Yes. Mr. Murphy, do you mean that you lied on your application? No. Well, he, yes. Only to get my foot in the door. So an initiative in that like. But you were referred to here by the Department of Employment. There was no need for you to get your foot in the door, as you put it. Eh, uh, cool. Whatever you say, I'm sorry. You're the man, the dude in the chair. Huh? I gotta say, that was one of the... That's the worst job interview I ever saw in a movie. Yeah, well, I, I didn't get it. You didn't get that job, no. <laughs> you didn't seem to impress him that much. I, I'm curious, in this movie, again, on, on the line of just how realistic or real it seemed, did you have anybody there coaching you or, or helping you understand what it's like yeah, to be a heroin junkie? We had an incredible group of people called Carlton Athletic, who uh, are an organization of ex-drug addicts mm -hmm. who formed uh, an athletic organization to help conquer their addictions. Mm -hmm. So they use sport and football mm -hmm. predominantly as a, as a means of uh, occupying their lives better. Right. And, and then the, these people actually helped you on the set to understand just what it's like to be in that frame of mind and what it's like to, exactly. to go through that. Exactly. They, they shared all their stories with us, of, uh, answered any questions that we might have to ask about life as a junkie. They also played several games of football with us mm -hmm. and uh, just helped us out, sort of get into the mindset. Into that mindset, yeah. yeah. And some of the sequences where they, they, they depict what it's like to uh, try and kick Heroin were just so harrowing. They're really brilliant. I thought the way that they were shot and directed were really brilliant. Amazing. You know, you just, yeah, you just really feel like you're living through it in a way, and yet uh, it, it's incredible. You know that the, and that you. It, it seemed like there had to be some sort of uh, someone there helping you with that feeling or giving you that authenticity. Yeah, well, they were there full time on set when we were doing all the drug related stuff. Mm -hmm. where we had one of their representatives, mm -hmm. sort of making sure that everything was authentic and nothing mm -hmm. was kind of, uh, you know, too fantastical. Mm -hmm. Now. So now you've come here to America and you're helping to, to you know, represent the movie or, or, or help promote the movie. Did you get a lot of American culture? I mean, you're certainly getting a lot of it now, but when you were growing up, was there American TV in Scotland? And, and what shows did you watch, if there was? Well, we did get quite a lot of uh, American TV. We got, like, stuff like the Dukes of Hazzard and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Starsky and Hutch. I'm sorry. Oh, Starsky, Starsky and Hutch. There you go. Please. All right. That's a good one. So, uh, did you, what did you think of Starsky and Hutch? 
Oh, I think that made the biggest impression upon me. Is I mean, I find that in infinitely cool. I mean, I was you know ten years old when I was mm -hmm. with Staskin Hutch. Right. In fact, we managed to persuade our father to paint a white stripe down the down the edge of our red capri. <laughs> <laughs> They used to drive that car with the, with the white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Not the for long. I think he got pulled over. <laughs> arrested. I, I'm glad that America's influence is being felt in other parts of the globe. There is a, speaking of American, there is a section in the movie that I want to ask you about. There's a, a part of the movie where you, all, you and all your friends, an American, uh, you're in a bar and an American walks into the, and he's kind of like the typicals or the cliched American tourist. tourist yeah. And he's there for the Edinburgh Festival, is that exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. And he's there and he's like, uh, you yeah, let's tell me where the bathroom is or something, and then you guys uh, proceed to, to give him kind of a hard time. Yeah. But is that, is, is that a, how American tourists are perceived uh, in, in Scotland? I'd say so to an extent. I mean, that was quite a welcome scene in the film. Did it? Oh, and so... <laughs> In Scotland, people enjoy that, that scene? Yeah, well, give them, it's one opportunity to enjoy it, because most of the time, Americans are coming into bars and asking where the bathroom is. <laughs> and we don't... That we is don't, what we do. That is, that is what this country is built on. We don't, we don't take baths in bars. We sort of take baths at home. Uh-huh. But um, this guy comes in and asks where the bathroom is. Uh -huh. So we sort of uh, we help him out and relieve him of his, uh, his properties. Yeah, his wallet, I think. Yeah, all right. Well, now we outnumber you. Get him, everybody! No. No. The uh, there's a scene. There's a there is one scene I did want to ask you about, which which I thought was really interesting. And and when I saw it last night, there's a scene where the main character, the protagonist, uh, uh, starts sort of giving a lecture. Starts telling the others. Um, one of them saying, "Look at this beautiful." They all go out to the country and look at the beautiful Scottish countryside. Mm -hmm. And one of them just starts to go on this whole. It's really a brilliant speech, but he starts to talk about how uh, you know. The Scots have the no self, the, low. the lowest of the low. Yeah. They have no self-esteem. Does that reflect how Scottish people at all feel about themselves, or is that just this character? Well, I think to an extent it does reflect. Um, the Scottish people maybe don't have as much self-esteem as they as they'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, as they'd like to make out. I mean, they certainly compensate by picking up their chests and being really proud about mm -hmm. you know being Scottish and mm -hmm. how wonderful it is to um, be superior to the English. Mm -hmm. You know, because you are sort of higher up on the map, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about the extent of it. Uh huh. And and also, but it's also probably a good thing to draw on for a sense of humor too. You know. Yeah, definitely. It was, that was also something that was very welcome. Very, it's a very refreshing uh, film. I mean, a lot of really fresh takes on the uh, traditional, stereotypical sort of notions of you know how you see drug users, how you see your national identity. Exactly. Uh, well, it's, uh, again, I, I, I saw the film uh, last night. I recommend it to people. I thought it was uh, very creative and original, and you did a great job. It was nice having you on. Thanks very much. Thanks for doing yeah. it. The movie's Train Spotting. Check it out. It's at Select Theaters. Oh, stay right here. That's all right. You stick around. We're not done with you yet, fella. We'll be right back with Jill Sobule. So we'll see you in a moment. collect yes hi dad just want to let mom know i'm okay okie dokie i'll tell her marge choice okay that's no idea i'm not trying to be bossy but if you use 100 call att you'll save some money say bye bye to bottle foundation and introduce yourself to new simply powder foundation from covergirl who else covers like a liquid but it's a powder so natural, so smooth. They should bottle it. But they didn't. CoverGirl put it in a powder, so it feels weightless. Goes on powder light, then goes with you... Anywhere! Simply Powder Foundation. It's the latest makeup shakeup from CoverGirl. Bye-bye, bottle. That feeling is real. When I sing from my soul, it reflects my inner pride and confidence. 
Part of that confidence is knowing that when I open my mouth, my teeth are incredibly clean. That's why I switched from ordinary toothpaste to Tartar Control Crest. My dentist says it has special tartar blockers. They're drawn to where tartar is forming, where you can see it, and where you can't. So I'm confident my teeth are clean. And when I'm confident, it makes a difference inside and out. Taco Bell introduces $1.99 Extreme Value Combos. Four new meals like three tacos and a drink, each a buck less than some burger combo. The more you eat, the more you save. $1.99 Extreme Value Combos. This is your chocolate zone. Indulge it, because now there's sweet escapes. Real Hershey's chocolate with less fat. Sweet escapes, new from Hershey. After 30 years and a half a million customers, it still holds true. When you're talking cars, you're talking... Coons. 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 In Baltimore, everybody's talking about Coons Closeout. Every 96 car, truck, and minivan is closeout priced at Coons. Now you're talking... Special factory rebates and financing. Plus, Coons Closeout discounts can save you thousands. Now you're talking... Coons doing closeout better. Now more than ever... When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Recently, Barbara O'Neill faced a financial problem that could have cost her everything she worked so hard for. She called 1-800-CHAMPION for a Clean Slate program. Leonard described how Clean Slate could replace her unmanageable bills with a payment she could easily afford. Barbara said she slept well that night. She stopped by to say thanks to some good friends who helped her have that second chance she never thought she'd qualify for. Does your bank have as many ways to help you? When your bank says no, Champion says yes. gentlemen, my next guest tonight is here to perform the first single from the soundtrack of Harriet the Spy, which is playing at uh, theaters nationwide. This is her first time on the show, so please join me in giving a really warm welcome to Jill Sobule. Woo! The sights, the sounds, the spectacle, the Olympic Games, brought to you by America's most watched network on Baltimore's most watched station. Let the games begin on WBAL-TV. A lot more fun than ending up in the emergency room. For the first time in their 10-year history, Goons Ford Baltimore has gathered the finest used cars, trucks, and minivans from a two-state area to one single location, the giant Goons Ford inventory lot. 207 Maryland inspected used vehicles on sale for three incredible days. All near below wholesale pricing. 5.9% Goons Ford financing available. Get to the Coons Ford used car sale through Saturday. Coons Ford, exit 17 across from Security Square Mall. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. We'll cash your check free with no hassle at Lexico. Make a purchase of $100 or more, and Lexico will cash your government, tax refund, SSI, disability, insurance, or legal checks free. New VCRs, TVs, microwaves, furniture, and bedding, all discounted at Lexico, and we will cash your checks free. Find out why we've been in business for over 30 years. Come in now and receive a free AM, FM cassette personal stereo with any purchase of $100 or more. Lexico, across from Lexington Market. Credit problems. Things happen I couldn't anticipate or control. When I needed a new truck, no one could help until I called Nationwide. 252-5600. Rebuild your credit. Call 252-5600 24 hours a day. Suddenly, I was on my own again. I needed a new car but kept tripping over old credit problems. Then I called Nationwide 252-5600. Rebuild your credit. Call 252-5600 24 hours a day. All right, folks, that is our show for the night. I do want to thank all my guests. Stay tuned for Friday night. We'll see you real soon. Good night, everybody. Bye.